What's up guys, thanks for coming to Game in Canada with me. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can overclock your virtual Wii and then run a PS1 emulator from your Wii U's home menu with gamepad controls. This is essentially going to give you a PlayStation 1 Game Boy. Keep watching. Real quick, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Me Boy for the new logo and banner. They look absolutely epic up there next to 10k subs. Why don't you guys go over to Me Boy's channel and subscribe to him to show him some love and make sure you go down to the comments and let me know what you think of the new logo. Alright guys, this one is super easy. Go ahead and open up your Wii U's SD card on your computer and then obtain yourself some PlayStation 1 ISOs and then head down to the links in the description and get both of these zip files. And then once you've got both of those zip files, go ahead and right click Wii SXR.zip and use 7-zip to extract it to here. Now go ahead and delete the zip folder. Now right click PS1 BIOS and use 7-zip to extract it to here. You can go ahead and delete the zip folder as well. Go ahead and cut your new BIOS.bin here. Open up Wii SXR folder and inside of here you'll see BIOS and ISOs. You're going to hit paste on BIOS and that is going to install your PlayStation BIOS. Now open up your ISO folder and go ahead and put any of your ISOs in here. Inside of the readme and also in the description are links to the Wii SXR's compatibility list in case you don't want to waste your time trying out an ISO that isn't going to work. So as you can see the games can be in .image format or even .bin and you can even throw in the .q, .ccds and .subfiles. I have a few different games here. They should work pretty well. I guess let's test it out. Go ahead and go back to your download directory. And now you should have these four folders. Go ahead and just highlight them all and drag them to the root of your Wii U's SD card. Now this should just merge all of your folders and basically install everything that you need to. We just need to hop on the Wii U after this, make a quick install with Whoop Installer, and you'll be ready to go playing PS1 games on your Wii U's gamepad. Now that your new folders are successfully on your Wii U's SD card, go ahead and safely eject it, reinsert it into your Wii U, and I'll meet you guys down there. Before we install Wii SXR with Whoop Installer, we're going to have to launch into custom firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and load Mocha custom firmware. You can also use Haxchi. Now that you've loaded into one of the custom firmwares, open up Whoop Installer GX2. Go ahead and tap on Wii SXR and then hit install. Make sure you install it to your NAND and not to a USB. Once it's done installing, go ahead and hit the home button. Hit the home button again. Now exit out of Mii Maker. You should now have a Wii SXR forwarder on your Wii U's home menu. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off my Wii U and turn it back on because there's a few things you have to do before you run this PlayStation 1 emulator. Now you're going to have to do these things every time you turn on your Wii U so I'm going to start fresh and show you guys how to do it. I've turned off and turned back on my Wii U. Go ahead and open the homebrew launcher again. When you're in the homebrew launcher look for sign c2wpatcher.elf. Go ahead and tap on it and now hit load. Now that you've ran Sign CW Patcher, you're going to be in custom firmware with an overclocked virtual console. So we can go ahead and run our PlayStation 1 emulator from our Wii U forwarder. I'm going to hit A on it, and we should have some gamepad controls. This software supports the Wii U gamepad. Do you want to use it? I'm going to hit yes. Now that we've got the PlayStation emulator open, we need to go down to settings and edit a few things. Now each setting is going to be game specific so you're going to have to edit the settings depending on which game you're playing. Over on the Wii SXR compatibility list next to the games it will have information about which settings are the best. You're also going to have to make note of which games have analog compatibility and which games only use the D-pad. There is a fix for some games such as Crash Bandicoot that only use the D-pad and don't have analog support. You can go in and change the settings from D-pad to left stick and this will allow you to use the left stick to control Crash Bandicoot. Shout out to Matt Kamira again for that little tip. Open up the settings under general, go down to select BIOS and select SD card and then boot through BIOS, go to yes. Next go up to video and enable screen mode 16 by 9. In here are also options for frame skipping, limiting in the FPS, as well as showing the FPS on screen. Now that you've changed the video to 16.9, go ahead, go back to general, 
Scroll down to the bottom and save your settings to the SD. Hit OK. I was going to go ahead and include a save settings.config already on the SD card, but I thought I would show you guys the different settings just so you get a little bit of a gist of it. Last thing to note, some games will crash on a direct CPU core and work better on the interpreter CPU core, so you'll have to go ahead and check the compatibility list again for your specific game. The first game that I'm going to try to play is Crash Bandicoot, so I'm going to go over to my input real quick. I'm going to go over to configure buttons. As I said, the D-pad is only supported on this game, so what I need to do is change this to my left stick. So I'm going to hit D-pad up. So I'm going to cycle through this until I see left stick up and then do the same for the rest. Now that that's switched around, I can go ahead and save this in case I wanted to load this configuration another time. So as you can see, I saved it to slot one. If I went to load default, it changes it back to the D-pad and then I go to load slot one and it's gonna give me my left stick controls. So I'm gonna hit the B button to exit out of this. Oh, right quick, I can go down here and save my button configs to the SD card in case you wanted to do that. And just a quick note, in case you want to see if your game supported analog or not, you can go ahead and change it right here. And let's try to load the game. Hit the B button one more time and load ISO. With the injection, we only have SD card support, so I'm going to go ahead and load from SD. And as you can see, here's my different games. I'm going to load Crash Bandicoot.img. Hit OK. And I'm going to go down and play the game. As you can see, my FPS is displayed on the top left. So as you can see, I'm actually playing with the gamepad. It's absolutely working amazing. I guess overclocking the virtual Wii really improves the performance of Wii SXR because this is absolutely running perfectly. This has got to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen on the Wii U. The Wii U just keeps surprising me, just keeps coming out being the greatest system that was ever made. I'm going to be absolutely serious. The fact that you can play on the gamepad or on the TV is absolutely next level. Thumbs up for Crash Bandicoot on the Wii U gamepad. Let's try out a couple of more games. Final Fantasy VII playing at almost 60 frames per second. Absolutely crazy. This is wild. Oh my goodness, holy crap, Final Fantasy on the Wii U. I'm now playing what is toted as one of the best Need for Speed games of the series, and this is Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. Basically, you get to play through the whole history of the Porsche brand, and it's just really awesome game. As you can see, I'm playing at 60 frames per second pretty much, and it's just running quite well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you are now playing PlayStation 1 games on your Wii U using the gamepad. Now, to me, this is just seriously the most next level thing ever. I love emulation, and emulation on other consoles is absolutely awesome. Up next, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can do the same thing with N64 games, so stay tuned. If you didn't slam that thumbs up, think about slamming the thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you dislike the video, I mean, I can't stop you from disliking it. I will see you guys next time. Peace.